All right, so I got another FOMO Co. PCM here, and uh, note said it is missing on one of the cylinders. So we're going to take a look here. Um, I do see this guy right here, this current sense resistor. Uh, he is bubbled, which means it overheated and melted the uh, package there. So there definitely was a coil pulling really heavy uh, on the system. Don't see a whole lot of, you know, damaged coils. Uh, right here, I, I do see where one of them has overheated. Looks like this one, because we can see a little bit. Yeah, like you can see a little bit of the black coming off right there. And, you know, you can see the back a little bit here. I guess that's like some extra burnt conformal coating. So I'm going to guess it's this guy, but we can take a quick measurement. So I'm going to use my meter here. I'm just going to stick it on ohms. And uh, on this computer, I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, but we have three coil drivers here and three coil drivers here. So I'm just going to check this one. And we can see uh, across the... Um, the gate and the emitter that it is 17k. It's a bit high. Usually, you know, it's closer to about 15, but 17 is okay. So these are all the same. You'll see they're all going to be 17, except that bad one. I bet you it's going to be different. I bet you it's going to be uh, 2k. Let's see. Okay, so I was wrong. It is not 2K. It is 640-ish. So very, very low. So yeah, it's definitely bad. So uh, just going to check, I guess, the... Uh, just shall mask the... Yeah, so this one is actually shorted closed, so it would always be on. So there you go. So now this is the um, emitter and the collector. And you see there's only 32 ohms of resistance between them, so always on. If you check this one, you should see pretty high resistance there now yeah. 305,000 so it's 280 280 280 280 so we have a bunch of 280s with this side we had oh, I must have saw it wrong we have this one's a little bit higher So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and probably replace those two. I'm going to replace this one above it too. I don't think this one is bad, but uh, the measurement was just a little bit weird for it. Now he was right next to this guy, which overheated. So I'm actually going to change all of them. Now let's see what value this is. This is a 402. So I'm going to change this as well. Uh, truthfully, this is probably okay. It, uh, I guarantee you the resistance is still the same. It's just that it overheated. Like if, if you dig down into this, you'll see it's just a metal strip. And this is, I guess, to help keep it cool, this material, whatever it is. So... Even though the resistance is still fine, it will still do everything it's supposed to. Um, you know, the way that it controls its heat or how much heat it could control it has been uh, compromised a little bit. So, eh, you know, go ahead and replace it. Kind of a tight fit with these guys here.
So let's get this guy off of here first. Because he is the easiest one. I'm just going to heat it up and I'm just going to lift up this side just a little bit. Now this side we're just going to do the same thing. If it doesn't come up that means we still have a little bit over here. And just kind of slowly work it up. Uh, you can do two irons if you want, but you know, whatever, whatever gets it done. Uh, now these, I'm going to just apply some fresh solder. It's still lead-free solder. I'm just going to put some on there just to kind of break through the conformal coating there. And we'll put some on the back just like this. Just temporarily put some there, and then we're going to use some hot air to help take these off. Alright, so that guy is gone. Let's get him off of here. There he goes. Gonna get some wick. Only wick I ever use. Super wick. Can't use anything else. This is just too good. Found no other wick that can compete with it and I've, I've tried a lot of different ones okay so let's get rid of all that stuff I gotta go over here to my parts bin be right back All right, so the uh, current sense resistor I'm going to use is just just a hair, a hair smaller, but it's still within top, so should be fine. All right, so I'm just going to start by putting a little bit of solder here just to hold it in place. Go ahead and do the legs. Do the same thing here with this guy. We'll put some more flux. I'm using this uh, Castor 951. It's not quite as aggressive, so you have to use a little bit extra and a little bit more often. It's a, uh, you know, it's just it's a lot cleaner, so I like it. Come on, guy, get get in there. So now this other little spot here, pretty hard to reach. I'm gonna use a small guy here. Try to get up in there. And he might not be able to get enough heat. So what I'm going to do is hold it like this, put some extra flux there, and get my hot air. Okay, I'm going to put, put this on there with the hot air, that will help. Alright, there we go. Touch those up a little bit. Now I'm going to actually put the uh, IGBD, IGBTs down, which I didn't do previously. Okay, so that should be good. There we go, that should be good. And that is all done. I 
to find something better to do with though. Okay, just gonna clean it up. The uh, 951 flux cleans up really easy. That's one of the benefits of using it over a uh, rosin flux. It's just a lot cleaner, a lot easier to clean up. Okay, so now I'm going to use my uh, probes here again to just kind of check, see what everything looks like. So we should see all 17s again. Or, you know, give or take, anywhere 14, 17 is good. The ones I just put on there, they're probably going to be 14. 15, okay, a little bit more. 15, okay. So now let's check this one. Okay. So that is actually normal. I know it's different than what we read the first time. Okay, so everything is good. This is done. This job is done. 